how's it going everybody it's Tanner here and welcome back to another Ninjago video here on the channel in today's video we're going to be taking an updated look at my top 10 favorite elemental powers now please keep in mind because this is my top 10 favorite elemental powers this list is obviously just my own personal opinion and is not supposed to represent you know the top 10 strongest elemental powers or anything like that so do keep that in mind as you watch the video and you might disagree with my list and I hope you do, because then that way you guys can leave your own list down below in the comments section. And also, be sure to do that after the video is over, or, you know, just do it whenever. Just leave your own list down below. I like to go ahead and read those and, you know, find out what you guys come up with. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into my updated list with number 10. So number 10 on my list of top 10 elemental powers is fire. Now, fire is, uh, you know predominantly used by Kai throughout the series and you know it might have something to do with the fact that Kai is my least favorite of all the ninja that I don't really care for this power too much or it could be because I'm not a big fire guy I mean the only time fire is actually really cool to me is when Todoroki uses it in My Hero Academia but that's a completely separate universe and we're talking about ninja we cannot allow anime on ninjago channels that's just not that's just not you know ethical but yeah, talking more about fire a little bit, I guess it would be pretty cool to obtain at least some form of pyrokinesis. I mean, you could do all sorts of things with it. You could burn down trees in the woods or whatever the kids are doing these days. I have no idea. Let's just jump right into the next one. So next up, we have Earth. Now, Earth is used by Cole throughout the series, and I really do like Cole as a character. In fact, he's one of my favorite ninja, but the power of Earth always seemed a little bit... I don't want to say boring, but a little bit underwhelming to me personally. Of course, you could do all sorts of things. You can make rocks that come out of the ground. You can go ahead and do whatever, um, as long as it involves uh, dirt and or the actual earth itself. But yeah, we've seen Cole throughout the series uh, use his powers in very creative ways. He can shoot little pebbles from his hands or whatever, which is pretty cool, I guess. But if I were to use earth as an actual power, I would tend to go ahead and actually summon rocks and mountains from the ground. I think that'd be really cool. Next up in the number eight spot, we have water. Now, water is, again, something that I've thought about possibly possessing myself if I, you know, could get superpowers. That'd be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? I'd definitely change the channel around then and actually do videos of me just, you know, saving the day and whatnot, Spider-Man Homecoming style. But still, water as a power is actually kind of when you really get down to it, what more could you ask for if you actually want to, like, you know, produce water yourself? I think it'd be cool to have a power similar to water and similar to Nia's power. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if water as a whole would really benefit me. I mean, what could you possibly do with water? I mean, you could make a giant tidal wave, which I guess would be pretty cool. And, you know, just doing other stuff like that, I guess, would be interesting. But, yeah, it's definitely one that I think should be, you know, kept in the show and really not... Uh, translated into the real world. Next up we have wind, and wind is a power that Moro actually possessed throughout the series, or at least that little small chunk of season 5 that he was in. But yeah, we definitely saw him using his wind power to a very high degree, and, you know, uh, judging from the name alone, I mean, hey, you have wind power, what can you really do? Moro showed us exactly what you can do with wind, and in my opinion, he actually went ahead and demonstrated the best abilities of the actual wind power. Of course, you could probably fly with that power or at least get to certain heights because you can summon the wind or whatever. And of course, you could do all sorts of crazy things with that, and we've seen Moro actually do a lot of these things. And because of that, and because of how much of an absolute legend Moro is, I think it's safe to say that wind is probably one of the better powers out there. Next up, speaking of villain elemental powers, we have the elemental power of time, which was possessed by a Chronix and Crux, otherwise known as the Hands of Time. So the benefits of time could actually be, you know, pretty extreme when you actually think about it. You are able to actually literally possess time and fast forward things and rewind things. I mean, what's not to like about that? You could go back in the past and fix so many things, or you could travel into the future and see what's going on there. Of course, in the battlefield, uh, using time is actually a completely different experience as you are able to basically reverse or fast forward anything. So, you know, but in terms of actual combat rather than just doing it for entertainment or for fun. So yeah, time is a really interesting power and I do really like it a lot. And having it being possessed by two people in the series made for an interesting dynamic. 
next up in the number five spot, we have the power of ice. So this power is pretty much dominated by Zane. We really don't know how exactly how he got his ice powers, but somehow he got it because of course he's an android, it is a little confusing, but ice is actually very, very powerful. As we've seen in the series, it can even take down such threats as the Overlord and even cause a great deal of damage to the Great Devourer, which in itself is pretty impressive. Of course, using ice as a power is very similar to water, except hey, it's frozen. So a lot of the same attributes that come with the power of water are also carried through into the power of ice because they are such similar powers. But in the series, I definitely think that Zane makes the ice powers his own. And again, we still don't really know how he got the powers, but uh, hopefully that mystery will be solved fairly soon. But yeah, ice is very, very, very cool. And yes, that pun was intended. Number four, my favorite out of the core elemental powers of the original four ninja, lightning. Lightning is possessed by Jay, and my gosh, is lightning amazing. I have a feeling that's why Jay was my original favorite ninja, because lightning is such a cool power to possess, and it's not just strictly in Ninjago, but other shows as well where people have lightning powers. They're just really awesome, and I want to be like them. Unfortunately, I can't because I don't shoot lightning bolts out of my fingers, but Jay does, and he does it beautifully. Of course, with lightning often comes speed, and, you know, if, you know, speed is uh, beneficial for a battlefield, and, you know, you strike fast and you hit hard, so, you know, win-win, what's not to like? Next up in the number three spot, we have energy. Energy is a very obscure and kind of strange elemental power that is actually possessed by Lloyd. And when Lloyd uses it, he basically summons a big beam of light from his hands, and basically he can throw that projectile wherever he pleases. Or oftentimes he'll use it to suspend animation, or at least maybe cause some sort of damage. It's mainly just a damage dealing power. And Lloyd is my current favorite ninja, and energy is one of the reasons why I love Lloyd so much. His power is very unique, and what I like about it is that we really don't know much about it, and we really don't know exactly what it can do. We've seen it do all sorts of different things, but there's not like a clear definition of what the power of energy really is, which again is kind of mysterious, and I really do enjoy that quite a bit. So yeah, energy comes in in the number three spot. Next up for number two, we have the power of Amber, and this power is possessed by Skylar, and basically what's one elemental power when you can have them all? It's basically just a copying power, that Skylar can use to absorb others' elemental powers and basically use them herself, which opens up the door for endless possibilities. And we really haven't seen a lot of those in the series itself, but hopefully we get more as it progresses. Of course, when Skylar was on screen, she used her powers for uh, many reasons. Uh, for example, she used the power of form to transform herself into Kai to basically disguise herself. She's used Garmadon's elemental power before. Of course, that one had a little bit of a negative effect to it, but uh, we'll, we'll just not re remember that right now. But yeah, Amber is pretty cool, and again, what's one elemental power when you can have them all? And the number one spot is Golden Power. Now, there is a little bit of confusion regarding whether or not Golden Power is just energy but supercharged. I like to think that Golden Power and Energy are completely separate powers. Of course, Energy goes into making Golden Power, which is why when Lloyd lost his power, um, you know, of the Golden Variety during Season 3, that's why he was just left over with Energy. It's a certain part of Golden Power, but it's not the entirety of it, if that makes any sense. But yeah, Golden Power is absolutely legendary. We've seen it in the series being used by such figures as the first Spinjitzu Master, Lloyd, and even Master Wu to an extent. But yeah, Golden Power is the ultimate power, and if you want any power, it's probably this one. Again, there's just so much you can do with it, and it's really impressive to sit there and just watch this golden ball of greatness just do a lot of damage. It's really cool to see. And again, in the series, we've seen it happen uh, less times than I would have liked, and I hope that they do bring it back in the future. And judging from 2019's leaked images, I think we can expect Golden Power to make a very strong return. And I, for one, since it is my favorite elemental power, I'm really excited for it. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll just about do it for my updated list of the top 10 elemental powers. Remember that this list was just my opinion and is not objective in any way. And I do want to hear what you guys come up with, so feel free to leave a list down below talking about your favorite elemental powers. So with that being said, that'll just about do it for this video here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, as always, be sure to give the video a thumbs up rating. And remember that the subscribe button is there too for you to click at your leisure. Of course, the comment section, once again, is yours for any discussions you want to have regarding this topic 
or if you just had a general comment, that's fine too. Thanks a lot for watching once again, guys. My name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell. Uh -huh.